Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. I'm on your host, Blessing Adeoye Jr., and I'm joined by host of PS I Love You XOXO, Greg Miller. Hello, Blessing. How are you? I'm doing good, Greg. How, how are you doing? I'm excellent. My lights weren't in Games Daily mode. Now they are. Don't worry, everybody. Go big with Go V. That's what I always say. That's For I a second, say. I thought you had animated your lights, and I was like, oh, shoot, they're changing colors. I didn't realize that you're doing, doing that manually. Yeah, just pressing yeah, the button. Yeah, yeah I hit the button. Yeah, yeah. I like the Portillo shirt. Thank you. It's fresh. Classic Greg Miller sweatshirt here from Portillo's. I feel like I've not seen that one as much. Yeah, you know, I don't. I can't explain it. Sometimes, it, usually, what will happen is I'll bring one downstairs, a sweatshirt, and then leave it here on the floor, and then I get chilly and put it on. Usually, it's an afternoon thing. I get cold over time. But today, I started cold because mm-hmm. it was a cold day. We went for a walk in the morning, so it was right into this one. And so I don't think it was. It was. I I had to grab one from upstairs. You know, mm. choose a new, a new, a new opponent to bring down here to the to the pits. Fair enough, fair enough. How are you feeling now that we're on this side of showcase season? I feel like we're what we just side of showcase season after yeah. the, the one day of uh, insane showcase. I'm feeling good, man. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know? Ubisoft forward. We had D23, and then yesterday we had a, we had a uh, direct, and we had a state of play. I mean, on a top of, of all showcases. that, of course, you know, PlayStation VR impressions going up today. New episode of PS I Love You XOXO live right now with the one, the only Tamar Hussein over there talking about playing a whole bunch of stuff. Call of the Mountain, uh, playing the, that their Star Wars experience and just using PlayStation VR 2 in general. The thing is, you say the end of showcase season, you know better than anybody. It doesn't matter. Showcase season, sure, it's done, but that means review season's here. Like, right, we're already waiting on a bunch of codes. Codes are already starting to arrive. The schedule's already getting packed with things we need to play and balance and juggle. What kind of chuckleheads said, let's review God of War on September 21st? That was a silly Uh, choice. What kind of chuckleheads would say such a thing, Greg? Who does that? Who would suggest in the middle of a show that we go back and we replay this game that is 20 to 30 hours long? I yeah. mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. talk about who, it in the who, middle of the fall. Who so stupidly would, you know, give a two month advance, giving, you know, two months when there were no games coming out to play a no, 20 no hour games, game? No games in, in July? There were no games in July? The month that had Live Alive and Stray and Escape Academy? Also, and, uh, what, was the, what was the one on there. Xbox? What was the one uh, as Dust Falls? I didn't. I, I hear there are no games on Xbox. The games never stopped. Immortality, Last of Us Part One, Saints Row, uh, yeah, yeah, Cult of the Lamb. You know, they, they they've all been here. Escape mm-hmm. Academy, As Dust Falls. And also, you know, we all know the rules to to improv here, right? It's, it's always yes and. It's always yes yeah. and. I can't be on the middle of yes loving and be like no. <laughs> No God of War for you, Greg, in the audience. No God of War for you. So I got a yes and. How is your God of War replay going? I remember, ladies and gentlemen, next week's PS I Love You XO is God of War 2018 re-review or whatever the hell we'll call it. But it's us playing it again, getting ready for it. How's it going for you? Because you're playing on Steam Deck. You're out there. I'm playing on Steam Deck and I'm also playing on PC. And now at this point, I played more on PC than I have on my Steam Deck. Because let me tell you, yeah. this game looks and runs real well on PC. And I've also been streaming it, which has been helping the nice. the uh, playthrough too. Because I I feel like if I was playing it alone, uh, by my lonesome, in the dark, in my room, I wouldn't be sure. enjoying the experience as much. But sure. playing it through the second time and actually bouncing off a of chat and talking to chat about the game and other games, I feel like I've been getting new insights about God of War. And I don't want to tease anything. But I'm realizing the second time around, not enjoying it as much. Still enjoying it, not as much during my first playthrough. But I'll save wow. that conversation for PS Love You XOXO September someday. <laughs> September 21st. Post birthday. September 21st. Everybody. We'll be we'll be doing that. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Phil's birthday. But Greg, enough about that. Let's talk about today's stories, which include a bunch of Yakuza announcements, a PlayStation State of Play recap, and more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash, no, right here on youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Games just for this week and the rest of the month. We run you through the nerdy news need to know about. How many corrections can you have in your own intro? <laughs> if you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash slash kind of funny games roosteeth.com or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of the show to patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show Housekeeping for you, a new Kind of Funny Games cast went up yesterday, and it's our breakdown of that PlayStation State of Play. You can catch that up on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games as the second half of our live reactions and on the Gamescast podcast feed. And then speaking of YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, a new PS I Love You XOXO is up right 
now, like Greg mentioned before, that is Greg and Janet being joined by GameSpot's Tamor Hussein to talk about his hands-on time with PlayStation VR 2. You can catch it, of course, on YouTube and on podcast services around the globe. But that is not all for YouTube.com. That's kind of funny games because he also got a new X cast up right now. The crew, the crew talks about Bonnie Ross's departure and the future of Halo. Plus, Greg gives a mini review for you suck at parking you can catch that again on youtube.com kind of funny games and on podcast services around the globe thank you to our patreon producer fargo brady today we're brought to you by shopify and me undies but we'll tell you about that later for now let's begin with what is and forever will be the roper report <laughs> it's time for some news we have four stories today a baker's dozen and story number one is actually like three and one, but it all has to do with the Yakuza franchise, which is now going to be known as the Like a Dragon franchise. This comes from Luke Plunkett at Kotaku. Sega has just released trailers for two new Yakuza games that are on the way. Yakuza 8, the next mainline game in the series, and Like a Dragon, Gaiden, an all-new announcement, which stars series stalwart uh, Kazuma Kiryu. Uh, that makes three Yakuza announcements in one week for Sega after yesterday's reveal of Like a Dragon Ishin. First up is Yakuza 8, which looks to have ditched having Ichiban as its lone star in favor of a shared adventure with Kiryu. Please note that Sega isn't really using the Yakuza name anymore. This is officially called Like a Dragon 8. The mm. eighth game, yeah, and the eighth game in the main series will be out in 2024 on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One, and PC. Next up is Like a Dragon, Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Not only is it filling Great in name. some amazing name uh not only is it that sounds like a chapter in like a kojima like a like a metal gear 5 thing going on didn't they have like a similar thing the man who lost his face or some shit uh not only is the it man filling who sold in, the world right the man who sold the world that's exactly what it is yeah not only is it filling some narrative gaps showing us what kiryu had the man who lost his face showing us what kiryu had been up to <laughs> between yakuza 6 and 7 but it's also specifically targeting fans who preferred the older style of game uh, before yakuza 7's leap to turn-based combat with a big focus on action-based combat the game is reportedly a smaller more manageable affair as well lacking the sprawl of mainline yakuza games hmm. like a dragon gaiden the main who erases name will be out in 2023 so great we got Three Yakuza, aka three Like a Dragon games lined up. How do yeah. you feel right now? I'm stoked. Uh, you know, I really did like the look of Like a Dragon Ishin. Is that how we're saying it? You know saying? Ishin, 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 Ishin. 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 Uh, I like the one of the you know throwback. I got a sword. I got a gun thing. I thought that looked really cool yesterday. Um, I like the idea of that shaking up the Yakuza format. Uh, again, it's a tired old story around here of like you know. I like the Yakuza games. I just had my fill. Uh, I reviewed a bunch at IGN uh, and then obviously tinkered here and there. And even with lost with judgment and lost judgment, which we'll talk about in a bit. I was like, okay, cool. Like I get it, but I'm kind of ready to move on and move to something else. As we watched the trailer here for uh, like a dragon, Ishin, uh, I thought this looked dope yesterday, and I think it's a fun twist on the formula. And like we were talking about with the being able to make force pe feed people plums and kill them that way for your heat gauge. I was like, yeah swords and guns and like running around doing this thing and it's going to be the traditional obviously yakuza run around open world mini games things to do but in a completely different you know throwback setting that seems like a lot of fun i mean i'm excited for that one for sure and then i know how many people are obsessed with yakuza now and have continued to fall in love with the series and it seems like you know they're always coming to game pass or ps now or whatever they're always out there and it seems like there's always more people playing through them for the first time uh, obviously adding more to it is cool too and moving on that way and i think it's cool to see them diversify right that was the thing we saw with uh, what the Like a Dragon that came to Xbox uh, that everybody loved, like Gary Witta. And we saw, I think, Reb Valentine fall in love with and the turn based combat there and walking through and meeting a new character and having all that. Like, I love to see them continue to expand on the franchise and really do whatever they want with it. You know, I remember being at IGN, I remember reviewing Yakuza 3 when it finally came to America, Yakuza 4, and then when they announced Dead Souls and stuff and it was like, okay, now it's now we're taking all the things you know and putting it into a zombie game and it was like, that's bizarre and it was, you know, hit or miss if you like that one or not. It doesn't get the flowers like the rest of them do. Uh, but I think it's uh, really cool to see them continue to expand on what this franchise is known for and really double down on its popularity because that is the thing of... I remember being so stoked for Yakuza 3 to come stateside because I'd gone over to TGS and I had... Uh, I guess Yakuza 3 had just been announced... I went to TGS and that's when they had just announced Yakuza 4 for Japan and seeing what a big deal it was over there and how many people were freaking out about it and then being excited to get it over here. That was super stoked. 
Yeah, I, I think it's dope to see Yakuza continue to be popular, right? And like that lead into these different iterations that you mentioned diversifying. I think not only are they diversifying the franchise, they're doing it in smart ways. Because with Yakuza Like a Dragon, right, you had that shift to, hey, now there's a different style. Hey, this is going to be turn-based combat. It's going to be more JRPG than the previous Yakuza games, which have leaned more into the brawler action-based combat. And yeah. I think with that, you have a split. Right. Like, I'm sure I think most people, from what I can gather, really enjoyed the the shift into Yakuza like a dragon. But I'm sure there's still that handful of people that are like, oh, this is cool. But, you know, I kind of miss the the action, the brawling of the previous game. Well, this was the thing, right? Like, I'm going to fuck this up. So please kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong. I remember when Yakuza like a dragon happened and they were like. That version is that that's now a subset that is going to be all turn based combat. Mm -hmm. And then was it that they said. The judge judgment was going to take on the traditional Yakuza stuff, or they say the traditional Yakuza titles would continue. I forget what it was. There was something there. Do you remember this? I don't remember what the story was exactly. I think anymore. I loosely remember what you're saying, but I've always registered it as, oh no, judgment is going to take that that combat. And if you want that kind of gameplay, you can go go to judgment. Okay, people are saying, yeah, they said judgment. I was correct. I nailed it. Don't gotcha. you're wrong me. You're right me. Kind of funny that com slash you're right goes slash to my PayPal, right. and you can send me money or my Venmo. Don't worry about it. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I think there's a like, really great way to do it. Uh, of course, like people who play Yakuza or people who have loved Yakuza in the past, I'm sure there's plenty of them that are like, oh shit, yeah, okay, this is what I like, right? I get the best of both wor both worlds. I can play Like a Dragon 8 if I want the turn-based stuff, or if I want something that is more along the lines of traditional Yakuza, I can play the man who sold his face and everything, right? Like that seems like a, a good way to divvy it up. Um, and then you have the spinoff as well, right? Which is, a cool, which is a cool different thing. These different branches all seem like branches that would appeal to the... the core yakuza base and i also like the fact that it seems like they're dealing with different scopes because for me with my story with yakuza i've always been the king of putting in eight hours into yakuza games right i've sure. done it with yakuza zero i did it with yakuza like a dragon and i did it with lost judgment i always get eight hours in and it's not even that i am not having fun or it's not even that like it's not for me i get eight hours in i'm like cool something else piques my interest and i go play that instead like for some reason i'm just like not all for the way into those games to play through the full 20 to 40 to 50 hours that they take so to have I, one that could be the main who saved the world <laughs> being maybe <laughs> possibly a, a shorter length that appeals to me right if that is 100%. 15 to 20 hours i'm like okay cool let's go i, I you know it, i i'm with you where you know that was my story with judgment both times around if you remember where i played i was super excited for it, i played it and then fell off and then needed wanted a detective game and restarted it and played it right before they announced it for playstation 5 or whatever but i digress played a whole bunch of hours and at some point into judgment uh and more recent yakuza games that i haven't reviewed but have tinkered with it just gets that thing of like i am enjoying this gameplay loop but it's just the same gameplay loop like it's i've gotten to the point where i'm not that i'm not learning a new move i'm not doing this new thing i'm just doing the same stuff as i brawl on the streets or whatever so it's like the story itself isn't keeping me engaged to the point that i have to stick around and so i bounce i bounce off of them and go away because it is so much going back and even thinking back to you know yakuza's that i've reviewed or played before it's not the story that i think of right and, and, and i'm probably you know i'm not gonna say i'm the minority but i i'm sure there's plenty of people out there who love the story and are so enraptured and like for me it, it, it's never been the hook that's kept me going of like i gotta see what happens next and cause a story or whatever yeah now i feel that i think for me with judgment or with lost judgment I I was into the story because I do like a good uh, detective story, and I think the moment to moment was fun. Even though I, if, I, if I think back and I try to recap the eight hours, I think so much happened that, that I couldn't even tell you uh, any of the finer details of what it was. But I do think the moment to moment experience of Lost Judgment and Like a Dragon, for that matter, are what brought me in more. Um, with Like a Dragon, I think the characters are what elevated it more than even the the, the story plot, right? Where I love that main character. I love Ichiban. I love the group that Ichiban found himself with. He, he was such a good hearted character. And I wanted uh, I wanted more from uh, from that. Um, but yeah, like when I think of my time with those games, I do think of running around the city and getting into fights and the flashiness of the fights, like Yakuza uh, and Judgment and all these uh, Ryu Gagotoku games, right? Like they all invoke the same energy that I like from Tekken where the combat feels meaty like when you punch somebody you really feel those punches the uh the combos flow together really well um and there's a flashiness to all of it that i think is really exciting to to, to engage with and so sure. like those are that's kind of what i come to it for and i i, I think for the audience i'm sure there's different portions uh, that um what that get attached to different things like i think yakuza in these games seem like a good whole package for people uh, to like want to either get into the story the characters or the the, the gameplay that i can understand why it's so popular
Yeah, look, people in the chat, uh, when I was like, uh, the story isn't the thing for me, are like f flipping out about how much they love it and how into it and the drama is the drama. Like, I'm, I'm, and I wonder too if it's how it was for me, where Yakuza 3 was my first entry in the series and it was one that took forever to get ported over and yada yada. And there you meet Kazuma at such a different part in his life, where, you know, it starts with him having started an orphanage and then getting kind of pulled back into it and being introduced to all these characters that in the third game you should know, but I was getting dropped into it without knowing it. I know how many people like uh, Yakuza Kawaii, right? And like doing all these different things and starting from there. Maybe that's helped other people. But back in my day, it was this thing of getting dropped in and there's a bunch of mafia people and this guy's got an eye patch and there's these cool tattoos. And it was more about, I want to beat the shit out of everybody and pick up that bike and slam this thing and do that thing that that was my introduction to it. And that's why for me, other than Kazuma, like I really don't remember characters and names for it and what happened in the story throughout my thing. Are you going to play these games or any of them? I'm going to play uh, the one I was talking about, uh, Ishin, that I keep mispronouncing, I'm yeah. sure. But for sure, that one. But outside of that, like, I just feel like, again, back to, like, we're talking about, like, number eight, right? Like, oh, Yakuza Kawami. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, like, <laughs> you said Yakuza Kawai? I said Kawai, right? <laughs> gotcha. Uh, which is what? Hello? Is that right? It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, cute. Huh? Oh, cute. Yes, 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 cute, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, for me, like, I don't... I. I can't imagine I'll be dropped in and be compelled to go back into that and try to figure out what's going on. Because yeah. even with uh, uh, what, now I'm in my head of Kwame, Kwame, yeah, Kwame, Kwame. Kwame. Yes. I that, remember that's like that when, the remakes of the original. Yeah, when I when that dropped and I started playing it, I was like, okay, cool, and it was just like, ah, I'm just not like being pulled into this. I don't need to play this, but I, again, I like the setting enough of that. What about you? Are you gonna play these? Uh, I like the idea of uh, Yaku's the man who destroyed everything. Like that one. Sound, it sounds cool just from the the idea that it's going to be more i imagine it's going to be shorter right if that's another 20 hour one i think there's more of a realistic chance that i play through it and see through it all than like a dragon 8 that said like a dragon 8 does have um ichiban and it seems it seems fascinating just for the fact that it is ichiban and then it's also kiryu uh who are i believe the co-leads of this one and that one is going to have a lot of talk around it when it comes out, right? It's going to be that, like, hey, everybody on Twitter who's into Like a Dragon game slash Yakuza games, they're going to be they're going to be converse, conversing about it. They're going to be, like, fanboying about it, fangirling about it, all that stuff, right? And, like, that might be the one to play if I want to be part of the conversation. I don't know if the other ones are going to have that big of an uh, eruption around, like, um, fans being, being excited about it. Yeah. Um, but that is going to be another one where I imagine I get 10 hours in. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And then whatever happens to where I just don't continue because that's just my story with these games. I'm cursed when it comes to, it comes to these games. But I, I, might, I, I might try it out. I might pick it up. We'll see. My other thing with this, th too, though, is um, I think – the change the name from yakuza to like a dragon i don't know how i feel about it and i it's funny because i'm definitely not the crowd that should care about this right there's way like any yakuza fan is a more hardcore yakuza fan than i am but i feel like yakuza just as a brand name as an ip name it's a sick name right there well it, it has <laughs> in, in japan isn't it isn't it not called yakuza it's, it's called like a dragon in japan that might be it yeah i think it might be a resident evil biohazard situation yeah but even 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 still, I do think that Yak Yakuza as a title for me hits more than Like a Dragon, and also I associate Like a Dragon with the explanation of, oh yeah, Ichiban in Yakuza Seven, he is somebody who's a big fan of Dragon Quest, and so that and that's how they rationalize that it's turn-based combat because in his head he is viewing this as a Dragon Quest game, and so like when they say Yakuza Like a Dragon, it is essentially Yakuza Like a Dragon Quest, and if they're introducing um, Kiryu in this new one, how much of that is going to still take hold right and is that going to be the through line through the in the future is it still going to be like a dragon when you get to nine and ten i might be this might be me reading into it a little bit too much but i don't know i feel like yakuza is an easier umbrella like hey everybody knows the Yaku yakuza is it's a good ip name is recognizable and i just th i think it's cool as hell compared to like a dragon but that's just me also one more thing on this bear you might feel me here as a persona fan i look at this mm. and i get so jealous man because, like, what? these mugs have games coming out, like, multiple games coming out a year. And I'm, like, over here we'll, eating scraps. We'll, we'll get something. We got the, we've got the live <laughs> Don't concert. you worry. We'll get <laughs> something. We'll, we'll get to, we'll, we've got the live concert for Persona next month. Oh, there you we'll go. probably cool, get man. Persona 6 announcement there. But that's going to be the extent of we're working on a game, and it's called Persona 6. And here's a color scheme of the game and that's all you're really going to get and then we will be able to play that game in let me look at my watch here uh watch, like five watch. years is Ugh. when we'll be able to play it because what i know we got strikers and i still actually have to go back and complete complete strikers mm. and then we got the dancing games 
I was like, cool. the Dainsy games aren't doing it for me, man. Let me nah. give me some cool, man. Give me something I'm, like honestly, Yakuza's bless. Game. I think you What's should up? play through <clears throat> the story of the fighting game of uh, Persona Four Arena Ultimax. Yeah, that's a lot of reading, though, isn't it? Uh, well, no, it's voice acted. <laughs> it's voice acted, but yeah, it is. It is very much uh, um, a lot of cutscene talking to characters and stuff like that. But it's very well written, and I would say I, I would argue that it has. <clears throat> one of the best written Persona characters in that game, which yeah, is okay. weird as hell because it's a fighting game spinoff. You're selling me. You're selling me. Cool. Enough about Yakuza. Let's talk about PlayStation and story number two. We got a PlayStation State of Play recap for you here. Of course, you, you could have watched live uh, with us yesterday uh, as we watched the PlayStation State of Play and then did our games cast right afterwards. And so if you want the live reaction, go over there. For a quick recap for you, though, uh, hopping in, I'm pulling directly from the source that is Greg Miller, who took notes during the show and then copied Hi, and pasted them into the Kind of Funny Games Daily Doc. Thank you so much for that, Greg. Um, of course, they started off with Tekken 8, where they said, stay tuned. Uh, over on the PlayStation blog, though uh they mentioned that the trailer was actually taken directly from a certain part uh in the current work in progress tekken 8's story mode uh played on ps5 in other words all the character models backgrounds and effects are the same ones that are used in game although this is captured from the story mode it is not pre-rendered it, it is not a pre-rendered movie made for the trailer but rather real-time rendered footage running at 60 frames per second similar to how you would experience the game in versus battle modes which i i wanted to add that in there because i think that makes this trailer even more impressive because i totally when watching this, I was like, "Oh, this is for sure pre-rendered CG footage." Like it, I, when I was watching, footage. I was like, "Shit, is this real?" Like because that's what it, it was giving off vibes for. It, it looks yeah. great. Yeah, it looks amazing, and this looks like a next gen of Tekken. Like if it actually is like this in-engine footage, um, this is going to be incredible. Like look at all the particle effects going going on in this thing. Let alone yeah. the actual like textures of the character models and all that stuff. Like Tekken Seven, I thought looks good, but I think it's definitely showing its age, especially after seeing this. And so this very much excites me. We also, we also got Star Wars Tales from Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition for PSVR 2. That is coming in 2023. We got Demio, a tabletop RPG PSVR 2 game. Uh, we also got, of course, Like a Dragon Ishin. Uh, that's coming in February 2023. We got Hogwarts Legacy, of course, coming out February 10th. Uh, Pacific Drive, uh, th this is a new game from Ironwood Studio coming 2023. Pacific Drive is a run-based first-person driving survival game. As a true road like, your car is your yeah, only companion. Yeah, road like it. It's growing on me. I didn't like it yesterday, but the more I eat it, the more I'm like, okay, I see where they're, I see where they're at. Change the culture with this one. Uh, based out of an abandoned garage, you'll be repairing, upgrading, and outfitting it to stay safe from all the dangers that surround you, each excursion into the zone. Together, the two of you will drive deep into the surreal woods of the Pacific Northwest, chase long forgotten mysteries, and encounter strange and dangerous anomalies, uh, all as you make your way to the heart of the Olympic exclusion zone. Pacific Drive will be released on PS5 and PC in 2023. We also got yeah, a bit. The two of, of you blessed because, like, the car is a character, too. Uh, oh, I see where they're yeah. taking us with this one. Oh, snap. Look at that. Uh, we also got a bit about PlayStation Stars. Of course, that is the, like, the, like, um, Membership, right, where you get the digital collectibles that are not NFTs. Uh, that is starting in late September in Asia with North, North, North America in the weeks to follow. It is free to join, um, and they talk about how the digital collectibles can only be earned through the loyalty program. Uh, once you've earned collectibles, you can arrange them in a virtual display case within the PlayStation app. And if you choose... Can't you fucking wait! If you choose, you may display a collectible case. You may display your collectible case uh, within your PSN profile to friends. I'm sure my friends will be so excited for that uh, to see my digital I, this collectibles. Is, this, this fucking got. This just reeks of the accolades. Like this oh, yeah. is something they're gonna do for like what this first launch, maybe a couple months later, and then it will be quietly sunsetted because who is going through the? I mean, like. It could be rad. It could be cool. It could be a million things, but like you can display them in your app. And then it's like PlayStation's, uh, PlayStation Stars will first launch on the PlayStation app and expand to the console platform in the future. So even at, the, at launch, you can't go to your PSN profile and arrange these things. And it's just like, ah, okay. Okay, good it's luck. The fact, it's the fact for me too that I can, I can think of so many ways that this could be cooler, right? Like if it was, and I know this is going to get a laugh at first, but if it was PlayStation Home, and you have an actual PlayStation apartment <laughs> or something, right, where friends can, you can invite your friends into, and it is this livable, livable space or walkable space that you're showing your friends. Sure. Hey, look over here. I got this Ratchet and Clank clock on the wall that you can look at. Or, hey, I have this Aloy doll on my shelf that you can take a gander at. I think that would be cool. It could also be 
maybe an, an astrobot thing, right? What if instead of like it being a digital shelf or whatever, it is, hey, uh, tying into astrobot, here is your own astro playroom. And it is like a, you know, you're running around a room as Astrobot and you have like all the collectibles sitting there. And it's like um it's like that one the the one room in Astro's playroom where it is yeah. like all the gigantic PlayStation um, hardware stuff that you're going through and seeing all the history. An amazing of. thing, right? And then even going through the little uh, uh capsule machine where you put in the yeah. coins you get to unlock all the different things that were these for all and I in that game it was very cool because it was a cool thing to explore and it wasn't the game, it was something you were doing as an extra feature to unlock these things, see, you know, a PS uh PS to see a Vita to put in you know the uh, that was awesome in that scenario I feel like they just took the wrong information from that of like oh people loved collecting that they'll love collecting it here in this rewards program and, and it's like well not really like I feel like if I was doing this I they were like we need a loyalty program we need a way to reward people for being dedicated PlayStation players the digital collectibles, the way they're doing them would not be the way I would go do it. I would have definitely been like what we already saw with the previous uh, PlayStation Rewards program, right? Of like, you can unlock, you know, you do the quest, you do the thing, you get a custom PSN avatar. You get a, you know, PSN theme that's exclusive to you. You have, like, I know that that's not necessarily the best way to boast that you're doing it, but this isn't either. In the, play, uh, re you know, arrange things in your PlayStation app. No, no, I mean, like, is that really what it's going to be? Like, uh, you know, wh where, why aren't you going through and doing and granted i know this is a very specific part of playstation tires but you know do this to unlock this to get 25 percent off your next playstation order you know they we're going to give you this you get a five dollar credit on your psn like these are the things that i think people would want out of this more than this idea of it that just doesn't seem sustainable yeah. like the first look at the examples include uh, uh, a scene with punto the gondolier from ape escape 2 playstation 3 pocket station toro and kuro celebrating a birthday cord machine and polygon man and it's like i am greg miller i am uh, a playstation nut right like maybe i'll do whatever it is to get the playstation 3 like the rest of these mm -hmm. don't speak to me like i don't know and i'm, and I'm surprised you even want to get the P ps3 I, well, I said maybe. I don't. Yeah. Like, I am not to the point where I need to go get the PS3 fat off of this. And again, you know, this you, as you read through this, Ape Escape Two, Toro and Kuru, we're clearly targeting uh, the Japanese uh, set of PlayStation, right? It's like when PlayStation All Stars happened and Toro was in it. And people are like, "Who the hell is this?" And people are like, "Well, no, he's big in Japan. It's this whole thing." Like, you want to target different markets. And again, maybe I'm misreading the tea leaves. And over in Japan, digital collectibles are huge, and people will be bragging about this and showing it off. Da da da. It just strikes me as accolades it strikes me as near game goods on your vita like it's just like oh well, like, it's, it's because there there's nothing interesting about it right like i think this feels like an award system that is boiled down or a loyalty program that is boiled down to the most uninteresting parts about loyalty programs it is just the digital collectible right that you're putting in that you have have on an app that maybe your friends could could go and go and see right whenever i think about things that are collectible especially when i think about video games right in relation to collectibles the dope thing about it is the dope things about them about them are one i think the action of getting the collectibles right which already doesn't seem like it's it's that exciting from the ways they're presenting it but then also the ways in which you can check them out slash show them off and yeah. for this it is hey just go to an app on my phone or once it comes to console hey go to this menu and navigate to my thing and then look at this jpeg of a playstation 3. imagine if it was even a physical space of you have trophies as an idea already Imagine a trophy room that you could walk into. Like, imagine yeah. walking into a friend's trophy room and seeing. Which is always supposed to be the promise of PlayStation Home, right? That they're going to yeah. do that. Yeah. Like, seeing different trophy cases, and each trophy case is a different game, and you can go and, just, and then see the, the trophies displayed. How cool would that be, right? Like, I know that and, takes effort, but I think it's something that's very doable and will be way more interesting than what they're doing here. And I just want to make sure we're representing PlayStation Stars. I mentioned, of course, we're talking about a very set uh, part of it, one pillar of this program. Remember reading Grace Chen's post from when this got announced in July, right? Uh, they did include all PlayStation all PlayStation Stars members will have opportunities to earn loyalty points. Points can be redeemed in the catalog uh, that may include PSN wallet funds and select PlayStation Store products. As additional benefit, PlayStation Plus members enrolled in PlayStation Stars automatically earn points towards purchases on PlayStation Store. I mean, I don't know if I made it sound that that was concrete before. I want to make sure you understand that that is a concrete thing that's happening. That for me is infinitely more exciting than digital collectibles. Yeah. Of whatever. And I understand you want to get out, you want to promote it. I just thought that this like was an incredibly flat presentation yesterday that really didn't show much. It was like, 
Here, here are the collectibles that you could get. It didn't show them in app. It didn't show you how to use them in app. It didn't show them on the profile. It was just like, okay. Yeah. For it to show about a state of play, I think you would think that, oh, they have something exciting to, to say about it. and Or at least the, package. Like, sell it to me. You didn't sell this to me yesterday. No, no. Jinkers in chat says, bless, show your trophy room. Uh, actually, I lost the key. Uh, sadly, it's locked. The room is locked, and I, I've lost the key, so you wouldn't be able to get into my trophy room. Move um, on. We can go to Greg's trophy room. <laughs> Sure Greg has that thing wide profiles. Open. Yeah. Did you see that thing yesterday with the the platy platy bird? No, what's that? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about is it. Is this another easy platinum that you're about to get? Don't worry about it. Wait, worry platy about bird. It. Is that like flappy bird, but with like an easy <laughs> platinum? <laughs> yes. Jesus oh, I'm, I'm trying to dig up. I'm trying to dig up the two. I'm, dig, I'm digging back through my Twitter to find it because I had a great exchange with Janet about it that I was pretty proud of. Dear God, I worry about you sometimes. Uh, well, we no, because also... like, because here, like Barrett, I'm sending it to you right now on Slack. Boom. So you see here, it's Platy Bird Trophy List. And as you know, as everyone knows, I love a good, easy platinum trophy. I'm, I'm, I'm a crazy human being, right? You're gross. And so, go ahead and yeah, you can click on it there. No, 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 go down, click it. No, not there, Barrett. Not There's there. I'm making a point. Games. I'm telling a story. Jesus so, like, I, this one pops up, Platy Bird. And I'm like, okay, you know, ZJ the ball, it was uh, outrageous. You know, I, I did a whole expose making fun of it. But then you guys were like, wait, are you getting these trophies? And I was like, well, yeah. And you're like, you got to stop. And I deleted all these DJ balls and I felt reformed. Then mm -hmm. for a game to be announced, be called Platy Bird and be like just an easy platinum. I'm like, that is a pretty ingenious thing. Maybe I, I dabble. You know what I mean? I don't need to fall completely off the wagon here. I don't need to go uh, outrageous on it. I can just do this. It's a funny little thing, right? But then when I tweeted about it, this is where I need the other one, Barrett. I this, somebody was like, oh no, these people are like notorious. And when you search Platy Bird, you get Pretty Bird Two, Pretty Bird, Pretty Bird Four, Pretty Bird Five, Pretty Bird Three, uh, Pretty Bird, and like it turns out that there's a gajillion of these things already out there, right? And at that point, that's when I tweeted. I said, oh no, uh, at Janet, you got to talk me down. Like I was like, I I need help here. You know what I mean? Like you've it's happening. And Janet uh, quote tweeted and said, I can't say I can't save you because you don't want to be saved. <laughs> And I did I buy any of the pretty birds? Did I buy any of the pretty Please birds no. yesterday, yes. ladies and gentlemen? Please say no. No, I did Thank not. God. Did I email the developers That's and ask for North American and European oh codes? My God. I did. I did. Because here's the thing, Wes. I don't want to support them with two dollars and fifty cents, seven times or whatever. But if I get them for free, that's a different story, you know? Because they're like 30 second plats. That's like you it's know, the fact too that like uh, Greg Miller, you are a man with a platform. You're currently on your platform, and you're talking about this game, and you're spreading the word of, of Platy Bird right now. And there's a good percentage of our audience listening that are like, "Oh, all right, yeah, let me let me let me spend the, how much is the bear? How much how much is the price for Platy Bird? Uh, two dollars, uh, one dollar, two dollars and fifty cents. <sighs> Disgusting." Like, listen, spend the two dollars and fifty cents to get an easy platinum because Greg Miller told me about this thing. Christopher responded to my tweet and said, "This developer I have found needs to go. It's barely a game. It's an image where you hold R one and collect seventeen plus trophies in thirty seconds. This is a this is not Platy Bird. This is a different thing he's scrolling through. Feasibly, in half an hour, you could get over four hundred trophies. God not damn. okay. To is which the trophy I market say, broken? To which I say, maybe that's a stream." Maybe that's the street where oh Greg Miller God. goes in with a company car. It gets like 500 trophies in an hour or so. Because I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking at, you know, Christopher's Speed thing here. He's got Dirt Journey collecting. Nitro, Dirt Journey, Show Journey Nitro. Like, seems like a pretty sick stream. That's to go actually, that. that's good content right there. You got good that's content. That's great content brain. right there. This is why I can't care about trophies. The trophy market is broken. Yeah, oh yeah. There's been a lot of time. We had a whole play. Yeah, no you were gone. Me and Janet did a whole uh, PlayStation podcast about you this. You know what PS, it is, you, so, the he's, definitive he's trophy so upset podcast. that the three of us are all at the silver tier. We are all, all at silver all tier. Together. We're all at the same We're tier. all silvers. The and silver he's boys. just trying to get away That's from us. That's what's broken. Silver That's boys. what's broken about the trophy system, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what, that we're at the same tier? I'm in here slumming it with all these people. This kid's got his trophies hidden. Barrett's only got Fred. Batman and uh, Persona trophies. I got to slum it down here with them. That's all right. I got, hey, I got that Rocket League trophies. Uh, platinum. I, I got the Tales from the Borderlands platinum. All you have is... to do is play through that game. <laughs> exactly. All right. And I did it. <laughs> Get on my level, Greg. Get on my level. Uh, level. We got Sin Duality also announced at yesterday's PlayStation State of Play. Of course, that is the interesting looking mech game. Uh, they describe it as PvPVE in the um, PlayStation blog post. Uh, and that's another one coming from Bandai Namco. And that's one that 
It reminded me of Lost Planet. I was trying to figure out the reference during the stream, and I couldn't find it. Uh, but afterwards, when I looked back, I, I was like, it. Lost Planet, that's what this reminds me of. And I loved Lost Planet back in the day. And so if this invokes that at all, then I might be down for it. Because, I don't know, this looks cool to me. This looks like it could be a fun time. I might be able to get Andy to play this with me. Possibly. This looks like a, a game, but you're not going to play this game. You don't think so? No, nah, not a chance. You're too, you're too busy. You're not going to play this. I mean, I Now, if you remember it and you want to make a, a big time. stink and make a point about it, you're going to play it. But I'm just saying, like, in general, I don't see you actually. I think there's a 50% chance that I pick it up. Okay. Fair enough. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, we also got a PlayStation 5 console exclusive, Stellar Blade. Uh, that was re-shown. That is one coming from Shift Up Second Eve Studio, and that's formerly known as Project Eve. Uh, this is one that I remember talking about quite a while ago on Kind of Funny Games Daily uh, and seeing it yesterday that this game continues to look really cool. It's the one that I make a lot of Nier comparisons to because it, it yeah. I think they take very obvious uh, inspirations from Nier, especially in like the tone and the music and stuff. But the action, like the 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 action and like the, um, not even the action, the like the like tools they're using reminds me of Metal Gear, right? Like the design of like some of the machines and all this shit reminds sure. me of, of, of Metal Gear style stuff. Um, this looks really cool. I don't know if this is one that appealed to you, Greg. No, but I think it looks neat. But I can tell by looking at it, I'm just like, ah, oh, this wouldn't be a game I would actually enjoy. I remember the gotcha. Project Eve thing when it first popped off because it was conveniently around the time when y'all were like, we need a Parasite Eve remake. And we really mm. popped off for this. We still did. Like, was this yeah. par- is this Parasite Eve? But oh yeah, that was the reveal. Yeah, yeah, we're like, is this is this Parasite Eve? And then they revealed it. <laughs> but yeah, this looks cool. Uh, we also got, of course, a brand new, just fire God of War Ragnarok trailer. Oh um, my god, I was, that, I woke up thinking about that. I went to bed right? thinking about it. I woke up thinking about it. And that also, of course, came with the announcement of a new Dual Sense controller. It looks cool. But like, Greg, how about that trailer though? What? A, well, I mean, come on. You kidding me? And again, it was that thing where I think. I'm so happy I'm playing through God of War again because, like, when the sound hit, I was like, oh, shit, here we go, right? And then it's, like, to watch it and even just see the changes, the differences, the evolution of it, like, where we're going with it, the continuation of it, uh, Toby from the West Wing being in it as a voice actor. I'm like, fuck, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, and this is one that finally I, I feel like um, – this, this is the first time where I felt that, uh, like, they've shown us something that – truly feels like a step beyond what God of War 2018 was, right? Because we've had that Game Informer drip feed uh, the last couple of weeks of like, oh yeah, here's you guys on the boat. Oh yeah, here's uh, some like shield abilities. And I'm like, okay, this is cool, this is cool, but like, where's the good stuff? And I feel like this is them actually delivering on, hey, no, this is the good stuff. You're going to get that here. Um, and so yeah, I'm, I am I absolutely adore this trailer. This is definitely, if we had a category for top trailers of the year or best trailer of the year, I think this is in the running. Like this is a, a dope ass trailer that has been very So happy. now here's the thing. What up? Based on this, and I know it's just a trailer. I know. Keep your hype. Do blah, 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 blah. Do you think God of War or Ragnarok has, is going to beat Elden Ring for Game of the Year? No, I think it's. I think it's gonna be tough. I think there's a chance, but I do think that you have to go above and beyond God of War 2018 for me. Do you, but do you think? Do, does that not look like it? You don't think? I, it looks above and beyond, but maybe uh, I don't know how 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 much above and beyond it looks. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if it looks Elden Ring like beating Elden Ring levels above above and beyond for me personally. And I think this I is gonna be a, a, if you're watching live on youtubecom slash kind of funny games, there is a poll going game of the year, Elden Ring or God of the War. God this of War. is get, God this of is gonna War. be <laughs> this is gonna be a two each their own situation. But for sure. me, I would put Elden Ring above God of War 2018, like almost with ease. Uh, mm-hmm. And so with that, right? If this is delivering more on top of that, I don't know if it's gonna be enough to oversee the Elden Ring. Um, I think you know. For the reasons why I love God of War and the, playing through it again right now, right? I'm kind of being reminded of it. You know, it is the cinematic presentation. It is the one shot camera. It is a lot of the shock and awe of like the new reveals in the in the the uh, new thing, the new directions that they've taken God of War, right? God of War Ragnarok doesn't have the benefit of surprise me in that way. It can surprise gotcha. me in other ways, possibly with story reveals and left turns and all all this stuff. Um, but I think the question comes down to how much more can God of War Ragnarok do on top of God of War 2018? Whereas Elden Ring is a game that, especially above other from software games, I think takes it into a new direction in a very exciting direction, really delivers on the open world promise, let alone is just filled with so much content, boss fights and like unique areas and sprawling vistas and incredible visuals and so many things where I'm like, how is this a video game that actually exists, right? Can God of War Ragnarok give me that feeling? I don't know. In the same way that Elden Ring did. God of War uh, 2018 also beat a very big, dense open world uh back in 2018 called red dead redemption 2 
Um, but that one, that, that one was a boring one though, if you remember. Crush I mean, Red but Red like yeah. again, thinking of personal preference and like accessibility, not on like the the, the terms of um, uh, like uh, you know disability and stuff like that, but like uh, getting people into that kind of genre of game. I think Red Dead Two and Elden Ring are very similar, not in obviously like gameplay style, but just like how dense and how much you need to how much time you need to put into that game for it to really like uh, give you that same amount of love back. I do think there is a uh, much more accessible approach to what God of War inherently is that I do think we're going to, I think it's going to be more of a balance than, than people think it is. Cause I think uh, a lot of people assume Elden Ring is going to sweep uh, a lot of different uh, award places and sites and stuff like that. But I think it's going to be pretty split. I, it's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's always the thing about this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, right now, first off, of course, right off the dome, right now for game of the year prediction, right now, Elden Ring has the win right now with fifty two percent of the vote. Got a War forty eight percent of the vote. However, in the chat, Philip Espinosa says, "No one is playing God of War. How can we vote? You seem like a lot of fun at parties." You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm asking you to predict what you think will win Game of the Year. I'm not asking you if the defendant should live or die, everybody. We're talking about toys. Hang on and have some fun, will you? Good Lord, Philip. Yeah. Uh, but back to it. Like, I think that's a great thing about it where it's like God of War is going to be a more traditional mainstream blockbuster. And so if they nail it and crush it and it's a more in, uh, enjoyable, right, digestible, straight through, linear, even though you can go different places, obviously, and do some stuff, but linear story, that serves a different kind of gamer than Elden Rings opens what go whatever you want to do do whatever you want to do it's oh it's hard but it's not if you do this that the other kind of thing it'll be interesting to see how that nets out at all the other sites and all the other places and kind of funny when we all vote yeah and that's my thing is that you know I think the, my 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 idea of teach it's going to be a teach their own kind of thing goes back to what Bear is saying in terms of the split where I do think that God of War Ragnarok is going to win plenty of game of the year awards you know I I I I think it's going to be a person by person thing personally I think Elden Ring if God of War is as good as, as we think it's going to be, I still think Elden Ring might still take it for me because Elden Ring is more my type of game than God of War. Yeah. But like, I think outlet by outlet, you're going to see a lot of Elden Rings. You're going to see a lot of God of War Ragnaroks, and those are going to be the two that are probably dominating, again, if it's as good as we think it is, it's going to be. God of War Ragnarok, I think, will probably take a, a kind of funniest game of the year. And I, but really? I'm, me and Aiden are going to be 100%. bummed about it. I think so. Yeah. Again, really? Greg, Greg, you have to think. What was the game that won Game of the Year for 2021? It was Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank was the and because the reason it won Game of the Year, it was the one game that was on every single person's list. And so you have to think. It'll about, be interesting like, though. Yeah. The, the difference here, Barrett, is I think that and this is was my prediction on Gamescast when I said either Elden Ring is going to be kind of funny's Game of the Year or it'll be terrible. And since it wasn't a terrible game, it's I think it's going to be got because I think so many people are going to put it at one. You're going to have a different All thing right. than how it was before. But, like, my thing is for who we are as a cast, right? Like, how many of us are going to put God of War at number one, right? How many, well, how many of again, us are not going to have Elden Ring on that list? How many of us who, – who, who all is voting this time around? Mm. That, yeah. I mean, you if know, it's – Kind I, of funny, I, I, it I continues to expand the, and expand yeah, and expand. So sure. how many people are we allowing in to vote this time? Yeah. Well, because the, the way I go through it, right? Like, I think the, – the, the difference here, right? The deal break, deal break here for me is that I think all of us are going to have God of War on our list. I think half of us aren't even going to have Elden Ring on our list. Because I don't think you, Greg, are going to have Elden Ring. I don't think Shane is going to have Elden Ring. I don't think Tim's going to have Elden Ring, right? Like, I, 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 when it comes to when it comes to God of War, right? I think God of War is going to be my number two, possibly, right? Sure. I think God of War will be Andy's number two, possibly. I think it'll. Well, be don't forget about uh, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. Oh, sorry, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. It'll be the number two after that. Um, but then, yeah, like I think Andy's going to have God of War on his list, high up, right? Me, me, same, right? And I think once you start extrapolating from there, God of War Ragnarok, I think, has a chance to be on everybody's top two. Whereas yep. Elden Ring is going to be on half of our top ones, if that makes sense. Which is going to yeah. give the edge to God of War to win. Because God of War is that kind of game. Uh, in the chat, Crazy. Sage Shimigami TV says, hire me, KF. No, I don't think you understand. I want God of War to win over Elden Ring. <laughs> so no, I like I like that. It's a rigged system. Yeah, I, need, I, need you to like, I need you to like uh, uh, redo the points so that like, well, number one gets uh, well, 10 well, more When we get closer to the game of the year, we will have a conversation on like point systems and stuff like that. Because I, I, I you know, I it. like to, I like the audience feedback. I always like to, you know, hone it in and make it better every year. So we'll, we'll have a conversation. I feel Real like quick, the more too, interesting. You, I, tw I gave you a tweet here. As we, I assume we're getting ready to tr transition. I'm sorry. If, we, if you have more to say, oh, yeah, just no. go ahead, bless. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say, so go for it. Actually, I was going to transition to a different topic. Oh, well, then there you go. Bear, throw up the tweet I gave you over here real quick, just so you know. Because this is the thing. The guy who said, hey, these people, scroll up a bit uh, to the video. This is the guy who was like, oh, this developer's horrible. You just hold your trophy. You, R1. I said that, and then uh, Greg will avoid these two, I hope. This guy says, tweeting kind of funny, as if 
like I have a boss that's going to get me in trouble to which then I just responded like, are you watching kind of funny games daily? Cause I just emailed this publisher about these codes too. People don't understand. People see me talking about the easy trophies and they come in like, you're right. The system's broken. Look at all these shitty trophies. And I go, oh, if I can get them for free, if I can get them for free, I'm going to feast tonight, baby. Woo. I worry so much about this company sometimes <laughs> with Greg Miller as the leader, this madman with his Portillo shirt. Uh, if you want to support, this company you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can go and get the show ad free and speaking of ads let us tell you about our sponsors this episode is brought to you by me undies we've all heard of gut instinct but have you ever heard of butt instinct it's when your butt tells you it wants new undies listen to your butt. Luckily, we work with MeUndies, makers of the most buttery, soft, and sustainable undies, bralettes, and socks that exist. You know that I have lived my life, MeUndies, head to toe, for the majority of the last couple years. I'm just all in on MeUndies because they are absolutely the most comfortable uh, clothes I've ever put on my body. Available in sizes extra small to 4XL. They have new colors and prints dropping weekly, so there's always something exciting to check out. You can try their free-to-join membership for free shipping on every order and exclusive perks like an item shipped to your door every month, secret sales, and early access to their newest stuff. MeUndies has a great offer for you guys out there. For any first-time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash kinda funny. That's MeUndies.com slash kinda funny. Shout out to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Shopify powers our very own kindoffunny.com slash store, our merch store. And we love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Shopify gives for entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere. Shopify unlocks the opportunity of your business to more people every day, every 28 seconds, an entrepreneur like you makes the first sale on Shopify. Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. You can reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps. It's more than a store, Shopify grows with you. You can go to shopify.com slash kfgames, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash kfgames right now. That's S-H-O-P-I-F-Y dot com slash kfgames, all lowercase. Listen, all I'm saying is that maybe we need an electoral college for game of the year. So that we that can work make really sure. Well for this country, I, I, I feel like the electoral college has proven that it doesn't actually, you know, represent the voice of the people. You know, time and time but again. But here's the thing: I feel like Elden Ring winning would be the voice of the people. You know, can we really trust the popular? I, I, I think that's just the voice that you you want the voice of the people to have. Blessing, you know, because it's, it's the right choice, though. You know, it's the mm -hmm. right choice. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, make our content great again. I'm, I miss old. Kind of <laughs> oh my god! All right. Oh <laughs> my Bless god! Two seconds away. I'll, be the, you <laughs> I'll, I'll be the one to say from our Discord. I'll be the one to say it. All right. Story number three: uh, Ads for Deathloop have started appearing on Xbox. This comes from Jordan Midler at Video Games Chronicle. I'm shocked. Ads, ads for the PS5 console exclusive Deathloop have started appearing on Xbox. The arcane developed action game was originally released on PS5 and PC on September 14th, 2021. Now that the exclusivity period has elapsed, an, an ad for the game has begun appearing on Xbox dashboards. However, selecting the ad doesn't currently lead to an Xbox store page as it appears to have gone live early. No release date has been provided as of the time of the writing of this writing, uh, and it's unclear if the game will be added to Xbox Game Pass. Greg, this is inevitable, right? Yeah, well, of course. We've talked about this forever. Of like, well, cool, this has happened. When is the exclusivity up? Is it just one year? Blah 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 blah. It looks like we're finally approaching the announcement. Uh, there is, of course, the xbox tgs showcase right tomorrow i think it is coming up they can announce yeah. it there you figure they can that, put it there that's such a weird place for them to announce it though right like, i mean they have a long just... stream yeah arcane's yeah. not a japanese studio obviously whatever yeah. but again i'll remember the initial release of uh death loop uh september 14th so one year ago today mm. maybe it could be more of just like a general first party hey let's make some announcements here and maybe it is just like yeah. it lines up uh, in terms of date to where they can get that out i think that plus like what if it is oh, actually i guess they can do this i'll get i was gonna loop in ghostwire tokyo since that is 
uh, I believe that studio is Japanese, and so maybe they can like lump those together and go, hey, these sure. two games are coming to Xbox. But I would figure that Ghostwire is probably still um, going to be until spring, until that's able to to make its way to Xbox. God, Ghostwire was this year, wasn't it? Yeah, Ghostwire yeah. was spring. <laughs> You think that's going to uh, get into <laughs> Game of the Year? Yeah. No, not at all. Uh, conversations? Who no. the fuck has talked about that game since it came out? Uh, Greg was right. A, couple. a lot of people want to say I was wrong about that. I was right. Damn. Damn. Uh, let's hop in to story number four. Speaking of Xbox, 343 is reportedly losing another member of its leadership team. This Go! is Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle. Halo Studio 343 Industries is reportedly set to lose another member of its leadership team in the shape of engineering director David Berger. That's according to a Lords of Gaming report corroborated by Windows Central sources. Former FASA interactive developer Berger has been with 343 for over 14 years and at Microsoft for over 20. During his time at 343, he has built a 120 uh, strong engineering team from the ground up, according to his LinkedIn profile. He helped ship Halo 4, Halo 5, and Halo Infinite, including leading development of the slip space engine used for the most recent series entry. If accurate, Berger's exit from 343 will follow that of Bonnie Ross, who announced on Monday that she's stepping down after 15 years in charge of the studio in order to attend a family medical issue. Ross is also leaving Microsoft after more than 28 years in gaming at the company. Coinciding with the announcement of her departure, Microsoft said it had restructured 343's leadership team. 343's former head of production, Pierre Hintz, has taken on the role of studio head. Another one bites the dust, Greg. It say. sure does, Blessing. <laughs> of course, the X-Cast today, I, I pop on to talk about you, know, you suck at parking. But before that, they talk about the future of Halo. They talk about 343 and Bonnie leaving. And then, yeah, this is an interesting uh, wrinkle as well. Of course, you have to look at Bridger has been with 343 for over 14 years and Microsoft for over 20. So as with any of this kind of stuff, when do you leave? When do you move on? When do you want a new adventure, right? Like, I don't know if you can necessarily look at this and be like, well, clearly Halo Infinite's had so much trouble. It's that there. It's that's the problem, blah, right? Maybe it is that he just feels like he's gotten the engineering team into a place that is. This is good. This is a great time for me to exit and transition out as they get ready for the next phase of what Halo Infinite will be. But yeah, it's been interesting over, you know, what this all means, where Halo Infinite's going and what will happen with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that they are able to get it together because Halo Infinite, it bums me out that the post-launch content has just not been there because uh, the launch of Halo Infinite was so fun in that first month of playing was such a blast. And it was finally the Halo Infinite was finally the Halo game that got me super into Halo for that one month. And then they just didn't have the follow up that they needed. And so if, I hope going, yeah. to keep me going. Yeah. So I hope they're able to to pull it together uh, at some point because. I think it'll be such a bummer if they're not able to to, to get on their feet and then that game kind of goes to waste in terms of the actual pot potential of it because I've never played a game with so much potential that then just didn't live up to it in the, in the post-launch stuff. But we'll see. Story number five, we have a breaking news story. David Harbour will star in Gran Turismo uh, from filmmaker Neil Blomkamp. This comes from Boris Kitt and Mia Gal uh, Galupo at uh, The Hollywood Reporter. David Harbour is revving his engines. Uh, the Stranger Things star it has signed on, on to star. I'm laughing because this reminds I'll get to it in a second. Uh, the Stranger Things star has signed on to star in Gran Turismo, the Sony Pictures and PlayStation Productions feature adaptation of the best-selling racing video game. Neil Blomkamp, better known for his sci-fi movies such as District 9 and Elysium, is hitting where the rubber meets hitting where the rubber meets the road uh, with this one, directing the project uh, that has a script by Jason Hall of American Sniper and Zach Balin of King Richard. Uh, and shout out to King Richard. That's a really good movie. Based on a true story, the project is described as the ultimate wish fulfillment tale of a teenage Gran Turismo player whose gaming skills won a, won a series of Nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. Harbor will play a retired driver who teaches the teen to drive. Sony is planning a theatrical release for Turismo, a uh, setting on August 11th, setting on an August 11th, 2023 opening. Uh, this is cool. The reason why I laughed is because I didn't get to the end of the article yet. And like, so when I saw David Harbour is starring in this uh, Gran Turismo movie, <clears throat> I was like, doesn't it star like a, a teenager who's playing Gran Turismo and then turning into a race car driver? And isn't he black? <laughs> so when I read David Harbour, I was like, oh, that's an interesting choice for that. Um, <laughs> they've, they've, taken, they've taken a strange corner with this one, ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're, they're going to yeah. do it this way with it now. Okay, cool. But cool. I love David Harbour. So this sounds dope to me. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, he's great. And again, like I think. Gran Turismo and what they sound to be seem to be doing with it is an interesting take on it, 
where it's not just going to, you know, like it is all about the cars or whatever, but giving it a really grounded human story like you're talking about, right? Where the gaming skills get you there and then you go and then Harvard's going to be this guy. To, that sounds cool. That sounds like it could be a fun movie that isn't anchored so much in the video gameness of it, right? That's you look at Uncharted. How could they ever live up to this? You look at anything, the Twisted Metal, what's Anthony Mackie doing? Gran Turismo is kind of a blank slate. Cool. It has to involve cars and racing. Easy enough. We can make a movie around that and do something cool with it. Yeah. I'm with I'm right there with you. Now, what's this thing you added? Somebody gave us a ten dollar tip in YouTube. Yeah, that's right. So uh, of course we're streaming today on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Uh over there, Christopher, who's the guy from Twitter who was pointing out bad games that begging me not to buy them, is in is here. He said, I will gladly admit my 38 platinums are all easy, the most difficult being Rocket League. I support y'all earning them wildly and would watch a stream of the most plats in an hour. So thank you, Christopher, for for coming back around. Just don't support that behavior. It's good content. Is it though? Is it I don't, I don't know if I can. I watch mean, is it, it any in, better in than hour, whatever the fuck Nick does? I can't watch an hour of ZJ the Ball. I think that's where I, it's I not going to be an hour of ZJ Ball. It's going to be an hour of Platty Bird and Pretty Bird, and then the other thing, the <laughs> journeys oh, or whatever. Oh Lord, uh, Greg, I I can wait for you to play these platinum games and get all these platinums, and I hope it's just so far away. If I want to know what's coming out to Marvel Drop Shops today, where would I look? You look at the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today, we got You Suck at Parking for Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC. Food yeah, Truck Plus, Simulator. I want you to know, You Suck at Parking, as I said, I review on the Xcast. I think you should all play it on Game Pass. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. This is definitely a PSP, right? Port it to PlayStation or whatever the fuck oh, you call okay, it yeah. when you do that. I'd really like to <laughs> get some trophies in this one. Software to PlayStation. Yeah, there it is. Did it have a good achievements list? Did you, did you look at the list of achievements? Nah, I didn't bother. What do I care? You know what I mean? I mean, the bull, if it comes to PlayStation, you'll you'll care. Well, yeah, I'm but sure then when it, I'll cross that bridge when the time comes. All right, fair. Uh, we also got Food Truck Simulator for PC. Uh, the Wandering Village is out today for PC. Absolute Tactics Daughters of Mercy is out today for Switch and PC. Family Man is out today for Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Maggie the Magnet is out for Xbox One and Xbox Series X. Uh, we got Cube 10th Year Anniversary. That's out today. And let me tell you, I don't know if I've ever talked about Cube on any of our kind of funny shows. I fucking sure. love Cube. Go play the Cube 10th anniversary. If you want a really good game, go check out Cube 2. If you're a fan of Portal or just like the first person puzzle games in general, it is one of those and it's really great. Um, and so I'm- This I'm, is the I'm, one I'm, yeah, I remember this from, I'm sure you like, remember a different version of it, but I remember this on PSP, right? Oh, was it PSP? This came Where out in like, like 2012, I think. Yeah, but I mean, well, this is the 10th anniversary edition, sure, but like, what about it before? Is that is, is this a different cube? Were you not a, was it not a cube? Were you a cube that you rolled around on like no, other? No, no. You're thinking. Oh, I know what game you're thinking of. I'm thinking I of cube? what that game is. <laughs> hey, wait, was it just called Cube? Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't oh. have the periods. I guess maybe. Oh, hold on. No, I'm Cube sending... was like a for unless maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of the wrong game. Hold on. Now I'm not. I, I just sent you v, uh, PSP cube gameplay. Because I'm thinking of a first-person, like, portal-like puzzle game, like, sci-fi elements. Oh, I see what's happening. I see. Puzzles. This is Q with a cube. Or Q with a Q. <laughs> I'm thinking of Q, Q with a C. There's my problem. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but no, it Q wasn't anything like this. It wasn't anything like this. You're rolling this guy around? Because you'd like this one, Bust. I'll tell you right now. Would I? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not, it looks very puzzly. It is very puzzly. Actually, honestly... Looks like I could see game. myself playing this. This looks I, like I mean, I, yeah, this, this looks like something this I would have loved on PSP back in the day. This ain't a Greg joke. This is something that's happening right there. No, but, uh, Bear, pull up the actual cube, the the good cube that people should play. <laughs> we have cube at home. <laughs> we, have, we have cube at home. Go play cube. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, now I know what we're talking about. I'm looking at it on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Um, we also got SBK 22. That's out today. Uh, Unexplored 2, The Wayfarer's Legacy is out today on PS4. And then Judgment and Lost Judgment are now available on Steam. Um, Barrett has just pulled up Cube. Q-U-B-E. Q-U-B-E. Uh, it is uh, you adjusting like these different cube puzzles to like get through these. Uh, I want to call them test chambers, even though they're not. That's a portal thing. But getting through these, these puzzle rooms. Uh, really fun time. Though, I've only played Cube 2. Cube 2 kind of is it's a different vibe. But I would say... It's fucking dope as fuck. And so if you want to play a cube game, go play a cube too. Maybe Why check out this one. Why didn't they call it tube? <sighs> New dates for you. Got him. <laughs> Square Enix is releasing a demo version of Valkyrie Elysium on September 15th. That's tomorrow. For PS5 and PS4, it includes the first chapter of the game and supports save data transfer into the full game. Uh, the Sims 4, the base game, is going free to play starting October 18th. 
Undungeon is coming to Switch and PS4 on September 29th. And then Batora Lost Haven will release on October 20th for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X uh, with a launch on Nintendo Switch to follow. We got two deals of the day for you, uh, starting with a Dragon Quest sale on USPSN. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon is $20.99 right now. And then Dragon Quest... 11 S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition is $25.99. I had to figure out what those letters meant. I was like, XI, that's not six. That's a, that's 11 right there. Uh, and then for people don't understand what it's like to read that, like, not in your head. When you're like, you're oh, yeah. going through it and you're, and you're like, oh, crap, here comes something. Gotta yeah. think. Oh, no. Uh, Persona 5 Royal, uh, one more edition is up for pre order uh, on the Atlas shop. Baird, are you getting this? No, I, I actually entered this in as like an anti deal of the day just because it's $120 and it doesn't seem great. Worth it? Really? Because you got what? Look at this Akechi. Like, the, even just in the picture, the Akechi bag looks like not great quality of a of a of a bag it's a cute I'm idea to, I'm, I'm trying to read all the things it's all, most of it's just there. cards like it's so it's weird. treasure chest box they got a grimoire art frame phantom thieves art prints uh akechi's briefcase bag that's pretty cool um arcana tarot card deck. i, just, I wish there was more cards. variety it seems just like a lot mm -hmm. of cards that's that's really my the steel book looks cool and it seems that the steel book will be uh on sale on its own so i'm not a big fan of the the like like the treasure chests that you'll get in like a lot of collector's edition stuff. Because what am I supposed to do with that? It's yeah. cool once you first get it. <laughs> I'm not but a then fan like... of the treasure chest. <laughs> you get yeah. a lot of collector's editions. <laughs> yeah. What like, other collection does it come with the treasure chest? What? I'm, the I'm more so booty? talking about. I'm more so talking about like the PR stuff we get from sure. like studios that they send us, and I'm like, oh, cool, the seafood chest, and then I like get all the stuff out of it, and I'm like. Oh, what do I do with this chest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I just gotta find a way to store it or throw it away. But I always every time we get something, and I open that up and I take the photos, and my wife walks in, and she goes, "What a waste of money! Yeah. What a waste <laughs> of money!" One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in, let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe, 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 globe. Oh, let's see. Game. Uh, are... Play, play, play. You are correcting us about things that we already corrected. Uh, Yakuza Kiwami, of course. We figured that out. Uh, mm, mm, more Kiwami. So people are really getting on you for this Ka Kawaii thing, you really said. Sure, I, I, I would play a Yakuza Kawaii game, right? Like, make it chibi, make it a, a nice little cute Yakuza game. I'd play that. Okay, fair enough. Um, editorializing from Nano. Nano, uh, you're better what than What a this. surprise. I thought you were Nana, Michael who Jordan, not you know embarrassed himself yesterday trying to get us to do a news story we covered the day before as the first news story. Yeah, embarrassing. All right, Nano, listen, Nano. All right, you, you don't you don't have to write in with every single breaking news. I don't I don't think we gotta talk about the Xbox PC app being fifteen percent faster. All right, well, there's a reason why we didn't talk about that. It's because it's not a headline. <laughs> All right, that's it for kindoffunny.com. So you're wrong. I'm looking at these. You got, oh, come on, guys. Come on. Nanobiologist, Ignacio Roja. You guys are supposed to be the Michael Jordan and um, LeBron James of this, uh, this shit. And right now, you're looking a lot like, I don't know, who are some bad NBA players? I need, I need Andy. <laughs> yeah, we need Andy on that. I can't help you. Yeah. You're looking like... Um, John Paxton. You're looking like Michael Jordan after he went and gambled and then played golf and then came back on the Wizards and wasn't... Yeah, uh, people in the chat are saying oh, that's a headline that I care about. That there's this show that we do called the Kind of Funny X Cast. That's uh, like it's it exists to get into the nitty gritty of Xbox. You can listen to that show. Listen to that Thank show. You. Thank you. All right, the rest of this They're week's desperate host to for talk about of, anything. You know what I mean? This is what I talk about the fifteen percent faster faster launch rate on the PlayStation or on the Xbox PC thing. All right, go for you. Uh, this week's I host Paris for Paris has been playing daily. Cyberpunk backwards just to have something to fucking talk about. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow you're getting me and tim on kind of funny games daily if you're watching this live on youtube over on twitch after this is mike and nick playing some splatoon 3 if you want to catch that stream later of course subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny plays remember this has been kind of funny games daily each and every weekday live right here on on youtube.com slash kind of funny games we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about we have a patreon post show for those that are subbed at the server level patreon.com slash kind of funny games so stick around for that otherwise until next time Game daily.